what you build needs to be maintained because it's easy for things to fall apart when ignored. You have spent countless hours building your infrastructure, refining every detail. But what if something goes wrong and you have to rebuild it all from scratch? What if all your hard work just disappears? In today's video, I will show you how to set up Terraform to maintain your infrastructure so you never have to worry about rebuilding it from scratch. Whether it's a small configuration change or managing entire VMs, Terraform could help you keep everything running smoothly. I will guide you through every step from setting up a Docker Compose file to running Terraform inside a container, from creating secure credentials to configuring Proxmox using the Terraform provider. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to automate, maintain, and confidently manage your Proxmox server using Terraform. So if you are ready to automate your infrastructure and maintain it with just a few commands, open VS Code, and let's get started. Here, in the File Explorer, I will create a new directory and name it as Terraform. I want to keep all my files inside this directory. Now, let's create the Docker Compose file. Let's go ahead with the next step. I will start by defining a service and name it Terraform. Next, we need to provide image. For that, type image followed by a colon. Now to define the image, I will open up Google and search for Terraform in Docker. Let me open the second link from Docker Hub. This one is by HashiCorp, which is the official Terraform provider. Here, we need to copy the image, then paste it into the file right after image. Next, I will set up volumes. Now in volumes, add colon slash terraform. Here, the dot refers to the current directory where the docker compose.yml file is located. And the colon slash terraform part maps this directory into the container. Now, let me define the working directory. This will tell the container where to start working when it runs. The working directory inside the container should match the directory defined in the volumes. In my case, it will be slash terraform. If they don't match, the container won't know where to look for the files, and things might not work properly. Finally, we need to set the network mode. For that, I will type network underscore mode, followed by a colon, then type host. This is important because the Terraform container needs to communicate directly with a Proxmox server. Using host mode makes this possible without any additional network setup. We are done with the Docker Compose file. It's time to move on to the next step. Before we get into Terraform, let's install the Terraform extension from VS Code. To do that, head over to the Extensions tab on the left side of VS Code window and search for Terraform in the search bar. Let me install this Terraform extension. This makes it easier to write, format, and understand the Terraform code. Now that the extension is ready, we can start with. I will create a credentials file in this folder and name it credentials.auto.tfvars. This file will securely store all the sensitive information Terraform requires to connect to Proxmox. Now let's set up this file. I will add three variables to it. Let me start with the Proxmox API URL. This is the URL for my Proxmox server. I will copy this and paste it here. Then add slash API2 slash JSON at the end. Next, I need to add two more variables. These will hold the details of the API token I'm going to create. To get this, I will open Proxmox and go to the data center. 
Under the Permissions tab, click on API Tokens, then click on Add. This pop-up will appear. In the user, I will select Root. If you want, you can create a new user specifically for Terraform. But here, I will use Root to keep things simple. Next, for the token ID, I will provide Terraform. But you can provide anything as per your choice. Then uncheck the privilege separation box. Once everything looks good, click on Add. Now Proxmox has generated the token ID and the token secret. As mentioned in the warning here, this pop-up will be shown only once. So I will quickly copy the token ID and paste it into the second variable in my credentials file. Then copy the token secret and paste it into the third variable. Once done, let's proceed further. Let me close the token window. Now, you might be wondering, why did we create a separate credentials file? Well, the thing is, it's best practice to never include secrets or sensitive information in the main configuration files, especially if you're pushing your project to a public repository. Keeping your credentials in a separate file like this keeps them secure and out of sight. Now I will create another file inside this folder to define the provider. Let me name it provider.tf. But what is provider? Think of it as the bridge between Terraform and the infrastructure or platform you want to manage. It tells Terraform how to interact with a specific platform or service like AWS, Azure, or in this case Proxmox. Every platform has its own specific provider. For Proxmox, we need a Proxmox-specific provider. To find it, I will open up Google. Then type Terraform Proxmox and hit enter. Let me click on the first link from Telmate. As there's no official provider for Proxmox, we will use this one. But don't worry, Telmate is one of the most popular and powerful. We are on the registry page. I will click on this Use Provider button on the top of the page. This shows exactly how to use this provider. Let me copy the snippet of code they have provided. Once copied, paste it in the provider file. Here, you will notice it starts by defining the provider. Then it includes some key details. The source tells Terraform where to find the provider. In this case, it's pulling from Telmate. The version specifies which version of the provider to use. Below that, you'll see a configuration section. The name used in the configuration section must match with what's defined in the provider block. Because Terraform uses this name to link the configuration to the provider. Next, we will move on to. Now I will head back to the Telmate Terraform registry page. Scroll down a bit to Arguments Reference. I'm going to use some of these arguments like PM API URL, PM API Token ID, and PM API Token Secret to configure my provider. You can check the other argument as well from this list, or you can follow the steps I am doing. Let me copy these arguments and paste in the configuration section of the provider.tf file. I will also copy PM TLS and secure and set this to true as Proxmox uses self-signed certificate by default. By setting this to true, I am telling Terraform to skip verifying the SSL certificate. In these other arguments, I will assign some variables which will be mapped from credentials file. Now let's define the variables here. Once we type variables, the extension will suggest to complete the code snippet. Here, I just need to set the type to string, and the remaining two lines I will delete. Now, let me rename the variable name to Proxmox API URL, and copy it two more times. Then, rename them as per the credentials file variables. Once done, I will head back to the configuration section. 
Now let's assign the appropriate variables to these. Our next step is, it's time to initialize the project. To do that, let me head over to the terminal. Make sure you are in the exact Terraform directory where your provider.tf file is located. I'm going to run a slightly different command than the usual docker compose one. docker compose f, then docker compose.yml space run, double dash rm space terraform init. The dash f flag specifies that which file docker compose should use. The double dash rm means remove the container after it's done. All right, let me run the command. Once I hit enter, Docker will start pulling the image. Once the image is pulled, it will initiate the Terraform project. This is the command that tells Terraform to initialize the project. It downloads any required providers and sets up the necessary backend files. After a few moments, a confirmation message like this will appear in the terminal. Terraform has been successfully initialized. It has also created some additional files in your directory. These files are essential for Terraform to keep track of its state and operations. You don't need to touch them, but it's good to know they are there. So it is verified that Terraform can connect to Proxmox. Now let's go ahead with Terraform plan. This command is very much similar to the last one. But instead of init, I will use plan. This is just like a preview. It shows exactly what changes Terraform is planning to make without actually applying them. Let me run this. Since I have not made any changes to my configuration yet, Terraform should tell that everything is up to date. And look at that. It says, your infrastructure matches the configuration. Now I'm going to set up Terraform to create a virtual machine in Proxmox. Back in the Terraform directory, I will create a new file. Let me name it production.tf. This is where I will define the configuration for the VM. I want Terraform to handle an Ubuntu VM to get the configuration details, I will head over to the Terraform registry page. Under the resources section, I will look for Proxmox VM QEMU. This is the resource specifically for creating VMs in Proxmox. Now you might notice other options here, like cloud init, LXC containers, or pools. Those are great for other use cases, but for now, I am focusing on VM creation, so I will stick with Proxmox VM QEMU. Let me click on it. Once open, an example code snippet for setting up a VM will appear. Scroll down further, and there is a list of arguments which can be used to customize the configuration. I will copy the example code snippet to keep it simple then paste it in the production file. This will be our starting point, and we will adjust it according to our requirements. The first thing I'm going to do is rename the resource. I will name it production. Next is setting up the VM ID. I will go with 200, but you can choose any unique ID that works for your setup. Next, VM name will be production. This is the name that will show up in Proxmox. Next, I need to specify the target node. This is the Proxmox node where the VM will be created. My node is named Proxmox, so I will use that. If yours is different, you can replace it with your actual node name. Now, time to focus on cloning. I want this VM to be created from an existing template so, in the argument, I will include the name of my template. I'm going for link clone instead of full clone. To enable it, I will set the full clone to false. 
Next, let me set the BIOS to UEFI. This is done by setting BIOS to OVMF. In my template, I have already installed and enabled the QEMU guest agent. So I will set agent to one to let Terraform know it's enabled. I will also configure my disk setup as per my template. Now let's set the basic specs for the VM. For OS type, I will use Ubuntu since that is the operating system for this VM. I will configure the CPU according to my template. And for sockets, I will set it to one. Now I will allocate one CPU core to it and assign two gigabytes of memory. Now let me clean up the example disk details and those extra comments in the code. For my setup, I only need to mention the disk details like this. Let me specify the size as 100 gigabytes. Set the storage to local and choose the format to QCOUNT2. If you run into any issues with your disk setup, don't worry. You can refer to my other videos on Ubuntu Server on Proxmox for step-by-step -step guidance. Now that our VM configuration is ready, let's move on to the terminal. I will expand it. Let me try the Terraform plan command again. Once I run it, Terraform will generate a plan showing the actions it's about to take. Here, you can see the VM will be created with a resource type Proxmox VM QEMU. The full details of the configuration are displayed in the plan. At the end of the output, it says one to add, meaning Terraform will add one new resource. Now it's time to make it happen. Instead of plan, I will use apply in the command. Once run, Terraform will ask for confirmation. Just type yes and press enter. Now Terraform will start creating the VM. If you switch over to Proxmox, you will see the VM creation in progress. In the logs, you can observe the cloning process. Once cloning is complete, the VM will automatically start. Back in the terminal, a confirmation message will appear. Apply complete. One resource added. Zero changed. Zero destroyed. Now let me check out the new VM in Proxmox. If you go to the VM summary, you will see an IP address listed. This is possible because the QEMU guest agent is installed and enabled. And if you open the console, the VM is fully booted and ready for you to log in. Terraform will now maintain this VM as part of its state. That means if you delete the VM, Terraform can recreate it for you. I will test that out. Let me delete the VM in Proxmox. Now, instead of making changes to the existing VM, Terraform will recreate it. Let me try something else. I will update the configuration to allocate 8 gigabytes of RAM and two CPU cores. After updating the configuration file, I will apply the changes again using the Terraform apply command. Once again, Terraform will clone a new VM with the updated specs. If you navigate to the hardware section in Proxmox, the changes might take a moment to update. Once cloning is complete, you will see the hardware specs updated. And we have got a completely new IP address for the VM. This is why we set up Terraform. If this video was helpful for you, don't forget to let us know about your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching.